Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles, although she sends an emphatic hell no, hell no, um, when hearing hearing about this news. Um, so we're going to talk about the uh, American, the North American direct market comic book industry uh, being in its death throes again. Uh, we're going to talk about how DC Comics almost made Superboy into Supergirl, not kidding, this was an actual pitch, uh, and how more big comic shops are closing down. In fact, the Flying Colors Comics is either shutting down or moving. I don't know what's going on, but this one stings quite a bit because I spent half my childhood in Contra Costa County in Northern California, and that is where Flying Color Comics is located, and that's a shop I'd been to many times uh, back in the day, and it was a fantastic shop. And it's, I believe, the shop that started Free Comic Book Day, too. And uh, they're talking about potentially closing their doors. And this is on top of uh, Jim Hanley's universe in Manhattan, closing its doors. And on top of uh, Meltdown in L.A., closing its doors. Are you seeing a pattern here? And I can't imagine why. <laughs> I can't imagine why people don't want to buy modern Western comics. So let's let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. No woohoos. Like I said, Geeky sends an emphatic hell no. So I thought this was a parody. Um, and I want to be clear here. I, we're going to talk about uh, a particular writer, Mags Visaggio. Do not harass Mags Visaggio. Okay, please don't. Um, that's not the point of this. Just being that like. There's a reason that DC passed on this. And I'm actually kind of shocked they passed on this pitch to turn Superboy into Supergirl because they've been making characters gay and, and uh, you know, bi that never had any indication uh, whatsoever of, of being that way. And again, I want to be clear before I get into this uh, a little bit deeper. Um, I have no problem with gay, trans, bi characters in comics, right? I have a problem with established characters suddenly being given the makeover, suddenly being given the Tumblr makeover just for shock value. And we've seen this happen time and time again. Iceman, Tim Drake, uh, Jonathan Kent, and now Connor Kent. Connor Kent was almost turned into Supergirl. Uh, this is not coming from an alt-right rag. This is coming from, uh, well, a rag, but it's not alt-right. Bleeding cool. We're going to talk about this, and uh, then we're going to show you, I guess, Mags's uh, pitch for turning Superboy into Supergirl, and it was rejected, roundly rejected by DC. Apparently, that was a bridge too far, but we also have uh, Hawkgirl being non-binary or something now, not even a girl. I don't know what's going on. So let's talk about this coming from Bleeding Cool comic book creator Magdalene Visaggio, co-creator of Kim and Kim and Vagrant Queen, posted to social media yesterday her Superboy pitch that never happened. I can't imagine why. Could you imagine the headlines? DC Comics is turning Superboy into Supergirl and bigots are mad. Can you imagine? Yeah, that's... Daddy Zaslav isn't going to like that very much. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is Connor Kent Superboy, uh, the 90s, 90s Superboy, introduced 30 years ago. Um, yeah, so... Mag said, since it's never going to happen, yes, I was going to make Connor Kent a trans girl. I thought it was a joke. I saw this going around. I thought it was a parody. Like, Mag's Visaggio turned Superboy into Supergirl. I'm like, that's a joke, right? That's, that's a joke, right? Now I got, like, Padme face going on here. Like, you're, kid you're kidding, right? Because that, that just sounds like a very current. Oh, my God. You're not kidding. I give you Skyrocket, my master plan for a story that will never happen. Uh, she linked to a document on Dropbox of her pitch that delved really deep into both Superman and Connor Kent history, mythos, and what makes up this Superboy, uh, and illustrated by Transmet Happy and the boys' co-creator Derek Robertson. So apparently, you know, he was on board too. And I, I like Derek Robertson's work. I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, who the hell knows? Maybe it would have worked. I, I don't know. You know, what are they going to do with Connor Kent now? Are they doing anything with Connor Kent? I don't know. All you hear about is Jonathan Kent, but not to be outdone. Not to be outdone by Jonathan Kent. We got to make, we got to make Connor get trans. Whatever your take on where this leads, Superboy fans of whatever stripe should find this fascinating. Bleeding Cool 
is not giving a ringing endorsement of this. Bleeding cool. I think I think we broke Rich Johnston. I think we've gotten to the point now where Rich Johnston's even like, maybe we need to dial it back a little bit. Maybe we've gone a little too far, turning Superboy into Supergirl, just because. I mean, they've already turned uh, Jonathan Kent by, or he's basically gay, right? Basically gay at this point. Same with Tim Drake. Again, no indication whatsoever in the history of Tim Drake that he was gay, just other than we have to make him gay. And then toward the end of the pitch, Max puts all the pieces together in a brand new way that in the document she writes, jumps from one gender and name to the other when pitching the transition for one Connie Kent. This isn't the onion, is it? Fuck no, this is real. Okay. I'm, I'm, (laughs) okay. Okay. This is Western comics, guys. Meanwhile, Flying Colors Comics is possibly closing down. Jim Hanley Universe closing down. Meltdown Comics. We're closing down for a while, guys. We'll be back. They never came back. Can't imagine why. The whole dynamic I've been describing in this document is one of struggle to secure a sense of self, and it's just incredibly trans. His story is one of failure upon failure. He tried to be Superman, and that didn't take. He tried to make a new life in Hawaii, and that didn't take. Uh, He's founded multiple super teams that crashed and burned. He's had identity crises revolving around his origins before, but none of which led to meaningful, lasting change, all the while dealing with perpetual rage problems so common to closeted trans women. So if he is a clone of uh, Clark Kent, does that mean Clark really wants to be super, super woman? I don't know. uh... Connie always reverts to the mean. Connie found out she's a Luther. And the most that came of it was she shaved her head. She forged her own life on gem world, only to end up right back on the farm. Whatever changes she tried, this sounds, is this a self-insert? This feels like a self-insert. Whatever changes she tries to make in her life never stick. In other words, Connie has never faced herself square in the mirror and admitted the one thing that's really bothering her. As a trans woman, I need to make clear this is a very common, it's not a story people tell in the media very often. There are countless trans folks who finally put it together, finally connect. These are Mags' words, by the way, and I'm not, I'm just like, this is, this is Superboy. But I, I can't imagine why DC decided not to do this. There are countless trans folks who finally put together, finally connect the dots post-adolescence. Sending Connor on a quest for personal identity would absolutely shake this stuff loose. The person who comes out the other side would be meaningfully different no matter what. I'm forcing her to reckon with herself instead of with legacy. Can't. If we want, it's not hard to look at Connor's history and see an initial burst of queer bravado. A deliberate hyper hyper mask, hyper masculine, rage filled, compensatory phase. The black shirt, the shaved head, followed by a return to pure, the pure version of the character, already in the middle of an identity crisis. I'm questioning myself, therefore, I must be LGBTQ. Sometimes people question themselves and they're not. I'm just saying. And look, I don't know your situation, I don't know your circumstances, but sometimes people can have an identity crisis, and decide not to switch genders. It does happen. (sighs) Okay. Anyway. (laughs) Oh, God. So basically, he's a failure, so let's make him a she. From a visual standpoint, so here's here's, here's part of the, the Dropbox. I thought this was a joke. I saw it floating around yesterday. I thought this was a joke. I thought it was like, oh my God, guys, fake Mags Visaggio was going to turn Superboy to Supergirl because of course Mags would. No. And again, don't go attacking Mags. That's not the point of this. The point of this is DC Comics, in my opinion, wisely decided it would be another PR disaster to turn Superboy into Supergirl when they're already getting enough backlash from all the other dumb decisions they've made. And I have no problem introducing new characters. I have no problem introducing new characters uh, into the DC Comics universe. I have no problem uh, making changes to characters that maybe have shown some inclination in the past. uh, Of, you know, I'm saying like North Star made sense. 
you know, Tim Drake does not make sense. Iceman didn't make sense. And that's, this is what this kind of irritates me too. From a storytelling perspective, I believe this is as natural as a move, uh, as natural move as Iceman's coming out. It was not a natural move for Iceman to come out. And even if Iceman came out, why did he become flamboyantly gay? Like he didn't just come out. He had a complete personality change. You know what I'm saying? He was no longer Bobby Drake. It was, it was this totally different character. And again, if you're going to do something like this, introduce new characters. Don't attach these problems, which seem like it's stuff Mags is struggling with. Don't attach these problems to legacy characters, to existing characters. From a sales and editorial perspective, this has major benefits. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does not. First, it distinguishes Connor from the rest of the Superman family in a really big way. Second, it elevates him by offering a wide range of new stories to be told. Third, it refreshes him, putting him back in the spotlight while attracting a whole generation of new fans. No, this has not worked, Mags. Time and time and time and time again. Every time DC Comics does something like this or Marvel Comics does something like this to a legacy character, the sales go down. They go down. There's a little bit of a bump at first, and then people are like, what the fuck? And then the sales go down. They always go down. Even all new, all different, much, much gayer Jonathan Kent, the sales went down and the series got canceled. Okay. It was it was a, a novel bump for a while, but it did not last. It would sell like fire. Let me zoom this shit in. <laughs> It would sell like fire. It would be in the news. I don't think anyone has trans to pre-existing character, let alone one so tied to the deep mythos of the DCU. And while it's sure to excite controversy, it'll be the only book anyone is talking about for like a month. A whole month. Is it worth torching a legacy character and becoming a laughing stock in comic shops? For a one-month sales bump, DC had to have looked at this and been like, what the fuck are you on? I would have been like, what the fuck are you on? I would have told. I would have told Mags to her face. I would have, Any writer that came to me and said, hey, we're going to make a massive, massive change like this to an existing character that people kind of like, you know, I'd be like, hell no. Just make a new character. Pitch that to me. Pitch a new character to me, but not, not Connor Kent. You're not doing this to Connor Kent. And people were joking. They're like, so when does... Uh, Batman become Batman, you know, it's, it's become a running joke that this is all DC and Marvel know what to do anymore to get a sales bump. They can't tell interesting stories, you know, without resorting to something like this. And again, this is not an anti LGBTQ statement on any level. Uh, I have no problem with new characters, new concepts being brought into existing universes where it makes sense, but you do not take a legacy character like this and do this for admittedly just a sales bump. Like, hey, let's let's torch a character that's been around for 30 years just to get a one-month bump in sales. And yeah, people would buy it. People would buy it. It would be on CNN if CNN's still around, you know? And then they would be like, what the fuck is up with DC? We got hot girl that's questioning her identity. We've got uh, Jonathan Kent suddenly being bi or gay or whatever and dating some purple-haired polygon writer. And then we've got freaking Tim Drake, which pisses me off. The Tim Drake thing pisses me off tremendously because I was a huge Tim Drake fan back in the day. Tim Drake was my Robin. Um, when I started reading Batman, Jason Todd was already dead. Batman didn't have a Robin for a while. And I was obviously too young for the Dick Grayson years. I would pick up Teen Titans every once in a while, but it wasn't something I read regularly. Um, but I would pick Batman up and he didn't have a Robin and along came Tim Drake and I bought those mini series and, uh, that was my Robin. Tim Drake Robin was my Robin. When I think of Robin, I think of Tim Drake and there was nothing in his history to indicate that he was gay or bi. And I'm sorry, the way they're drawing him now, I've seen these like recent comments and they're drawing him like a scared little prissy. Come on. It's fucking Tim Drake. This kid was a bad ass. Whatever. Um, whatever your take on this, I don't believe anyone would disagree that they would talk about it for a whole month. Trans issues are at the forefront of the public conversation right now. We're in the middle of a sustained ongoing assault on our right to exist. So this is activism. Activism. This is just, this is an activism self-insert. This right here, 
shows you everything that has gone wrong with mainstream comics. We have writers coming into the comic book industry. It doesn't matter what their gender identity is. We have people coming in with the explicit notion of using the company, using the company's resources, using the company's IP for activism, for self inserts, you know, and they're trying to make a case for it. Like, yeah, guys. So have these people have, have they been whispering in the ears of the bean counters and editorial and editorial was so weak that they did not push back. Cause that's the only thing I can think of the reason that like everybody got turned uh, gay, LGBTQ, whatever, when there was no, no indication of that in the last couple of years, I think is because of a uh, Daniel cherry, the third, who was kind of running DC for like eight months or whatever the hell he wasn't there very long. And Jim Lee, who's asleep at the wheel. Yo, he's like, he's like the Biden of DC comics. Like he doesn't know what the fuck is going on. They trot him out every once in a while. Oh, look guys, there's a new Batman thing. I drew. Yeah, we're making comics. Um, and that's about it. Nobody's pushing back. There's nobody driving the bus. Okay. Then you get somebody like Dan DiDio who actually was driving the bus and he goes on, Oh my God, the wrong show. He goes on the John Delarose show. And now all these people like Mags are like, I'm never going to work with this guy again. I'm like, yeah, cause he wouldn't have let this shit happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this isn't anti-trans at all. You're taking existing characters, cha fundamentally changing them forever for a, admitting what is basically a one month sales bump. God, this is insane. So let's talk about the state of comics. This is uh, coming from bounding into comics, uh, not as accepted by the, the comic book industry as, as a uh, bleeding cool, but, um, yeah, the shop that created free comic book day signals it might be shutting down. This is Flying Colors Comics. Again, this is a shop I've been to multiple times back in the day. Uh, I, you know, I spent half my childhood in Contra Costa County. It was not far from my house. I think it was maybe 30, maybe 30 minutes. And this is one I would go to, you know, when I wanted to spend a lot of money. Like, yeah, I want to buy a lot of comics. I don't want to go to the, the small local shop. I want to buy a lot of comics. So let's go to Flying Colors. And they're closing down. It's not good, guys. Flying Colors Comics, uh, which is operated by Joe Field, the creator of Free Comic Book Day, appeared to announce it'll be shutting down following the 35th anniversary this weekend. Uh, in a Facebook post, the comic shop, which is located in Concord, invited customers to stop by the store for its upcoming 35th anniversary event on October 7th, where they will be serving Hulk smash brownies. <laughs> What's in those brownies? Uh, giving away a commemorative exclusive art print and hosting uh, Jeff Bonnevert for a signing following this. The post states, honestly, maybe a bit sadly, there aren't likely any more milestone anniversaries for the shop in this location, dot, dot, dot. So this photo of the shop at night is maybe a little reflective of the state of things currently. Okay, so Contra Costa County, in the Bay Area, which is a pretty progressive place. I know. I live there. Okay. Now, it wasn't quite in the state it's in right now when I live there, but you know what I'm saying. They're even admitting that comics is fucked. Okay. It's like lights out on the comic book industry. And a lot of it is because of, I believe, I believe uh, activists coming into the industry and chasing off old fans trying to chase this new audience uh, using legacy characters as self inserts and basically just writing a lot of really subpar crap that people aren't interested in while simultaneously the publishers were jacking up their prices because they're trying to get more blood out of the a fewer amount of stones and along the same lines, you know, multiple variant cover schemes, you know, basically the quality has gone down. The price has gone up and people are tuning out. They're done. You know, kids today, they're not reading comics, not American comics. They're, they're, they're reading graphic novels from like Scholastic and stuff like that. And they're, they're reading manga. They're not reading floppy comic books. We had a chance, a golden opportunity to hook the new generation of comic book readers with the superhero boom. All these movies doing billions of dollars at the box office. And what did we do? Oh, we made sure that all those characters that, that those kids recognized from the movies. Yeah. They weren't in the comics because we had to change all the characters because the activists wanted to change all the characters. So when the kids went to the comic shop, there was no Bruce Banner. There was no Steve Rogers. Or if there was Steve Rogers, he was a Nazi now. You know what I'm saying? Like what the fuck? Like how, why? 
How? How did you let this happen? You were too nice. You thought you were doing the right thing. You wanted to make sure everybody had a seat at the table. And I, I agree with that. But you let people come in and basically destroy everything because nobody was paying attention. Like, look, we can do this, but we can't do that. Okay, I'll give you this, but I won't give you that. No, we can't do this because this is going to destroy sales. Having headlines scream Superman's gay now, even though there needs to be an asterisk there. No, it's Superman's son, Jonathan Kent, and whatever, and he's not technically gay, he's bi, and, but whatever. That sends a message to longtime comic book readers that our characters are fundamentally changed and this industry is no longer for us. You know, um, making Superboy, Supergirl just because you can, you know, sends a message that we don't want your money anymore. We're going to do whatever the fuck we're going to do. And I got to tell you, there is going to come a time and it's probably going to happen sooner rather than later, looking at what's going on with CNN, looking at what's going on with uh, Rooster Teeth, that Warner Brothers might just be like, you know, fuck, fuck DC Comics. The movies aren't making money. They're chasing off their readers. They can't even sustain their numbers. They're not paying for themselves. Fuck them. We're going to license out the DC Comics characters to whoever will have them and treat them with respect. And you're only going to get like maybe 10 or 12 comics a month with, you know, Wonder Woman and Aquaman and Batman and whatever. Because there's no point. I mean, I saw Sean Gordon Murphy the other day said he's noping nope out of mainstream comics. Like he doesn't even want to be bothered anymore. You know, this is one of the biggest artists in the industry. He doesn't want to be bothered with it anymore. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting off the comics Twitter. I can't, I can't deal with it anymore. And that's just it. The fans can't deal with it anymore. The shops can't deal with it anymore. So there it is, guys. Uh, so this was a bullet dodge, but there are plenty of other bullets uh, that have entered the body. And uh, now they're just shooting the corpse of the American comic book industry. So congratulations. Give you, you give yourselves a huge pat on the back. Um, things are not going to get better. People are not going to suddenly wake up uh, and all their bills are going to be paid. I mean, we're seeing all these comic book pros out there begging for money, talking about being homeless. You know, can't imagine why. Can't imagine why gonna wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.